Sometimes as world builders, what we need is somebody to tell us just what is involved in a certain era of history. Like the Bronze Age or the Neolithic, or the Middle Ages. Like how did people live back then? What technologies did they have access to? And what sort of magic would fit the period? And that is what I aim to do with my era-defined series. And today, we're going to start looking at the Bronze Age. Welcome to another episode of Just In Time Worlds with your host, Marie Mullaney. Today, I'll be talking about the Bronze Age basic, like food, shelter, clothing, as well as Bronze Age technology. Just a quick PSA, I'm not an archaeologist, I'm not a historian, I'm just an amateur who does love history and does love fantasy world building. So if an expert says something and I say something which contradicts that expert, nine times out of ten, the expert's correct and I'm wrong. Speaking of fantasy world building, I do write fantasy novels, and if you want to support me in making more of these videos, you can buy my books. They have received quite good reviews. I haven't had bad reviews, and people do seem to like them, praising their pacing and world building and so on. So check them out, and if you enjoy them, please do leave a review. Okay, enough of that. Let's crack on. So what did people in the Bronze Age eat? First, we should talk about bread. The epic poem of Gilgamesh opens with a line, in the time before there was bread. So clearly bread was a big deal in the Bronze Age, and it would have been. The agricultural revolution was behind them, but grain and bread making was now becoming a thing, and probably yeast and all the rest of that kind of staple food activity. The reference of Gilgamesh was probably not to the time before there was actually bread. It was probably a reference to the fact that the people to in where the Gilgamesh epic was told saw themselves as civilized and saw people who were, you know, still living in kind of tribal societies as uncivilized. So bread was kind of the dividing line. If you can make bread, you are a civilized society. If you cannot, you're an uncivilized tribal society which is an interesting line to draw and also an interesting thought for a fantasy world builder to draw that line between those who eat bread and those who do not. But either way, if the era that you are building your world in is the Bronze Age, you should definitely have bread. In terms of meat, hunting has largely moved away from being something that everybody supplements their diet with to something that only wealthy people do. And you would have more domestic animals filling the role of providing meat. So things like cows, sheep, goat, and pigs. Remember that when you have large cities, you are more likely to have pigs as a domestic animal because they do provide garbage disposal in large cities. Of course, also bear in mind that unprocessed pig meat will result in tapeworms, so you'll probably have various things about like how pig meat must be prepared in order to prevent those kinds of worms. Meat would probably be roasted on open spits or in clay ovens or put into stews, which would be cooked in pottery uh, pottery pots, or it could be salted and dried or preserved via smoking for use in the future. So I think you would definitely have preserved meats becoming a thing, especially given that during the Bronze Age, you would have many trade routes as you need to go and find the tin and bring it together with a copper just as the basis of your age, besides all the other benefits of long-distance trading. And long-distance trading means that you want that kind of trail food. So think about your dried food and your dried meats. People in the Bronze Age were not yet lactose tolerant. Lactose tolerance is a thing that we built up over successive generations. But people in the Bronze Age did have dairy products and they consumed dairy products like cheese clotted cream and butter. And yes, it absolutely does mean that you can have cheese and wine in the Bronze Age because you can have wine. 
we found the first wine cellar or the oldest wine cellar that they found was from 1700 BC and the wines were stored in these clay jars. They were made from juniper berries, grapes and honey, this wine manufacturing. And that to me is just amazing. You can have a cheese and wine evening at your ziggurat in the Bronze Age. You would also have plants like sorrel and chives. You would have mushrooms. You would have horseradish, beans, nuts. All of those kinds of plants would be available to you during the Bronze Age. And, of course, you would have beer. Though it's probably fairly low alcoholic content beer at this point. The same for your wine. It's very low alcoholic content. In terms of Bronze Age cooking, most of the cooking was done over open fires at this point. Feasting was a large part of their culture, and we can see that from the archaeological finds. Like around Stonehenge, there's evidence of massive feasts with hundreds of people uh, being served from, from a central cooking pot. It does seem as though centralized cooking seems to have been a theme of the Bronze Age and that kind of shared cooking and shared food from a single hearth. So when you're creating your Bronze Age society, Think of it in terms of those big feasts, in terms of having a centralized cooking hearth and some way for that to be supported by the community. Remember that in the Bronze Age, especially the early Bronze Age, you're not yet looking at the later period of the individual being very much front and center. The early Bronze Age grew out of the Stone Age, which was still very much a community-based age. Property was held in community more than it was held by an individual. Or this starts to change in the early, in the late Stone Age with the rise of the elites and that trend of privatization becomes more and more evident as you move through the Bronze Age. But especially at the beginning, there will certainly still be a lot of community and a lot of communal life and things like cooking together would have been an attribute of that. But what did these people wear when they were cooking together or eating together or whatever they were doing together? So during the Bronze Age, you definitely have wool, you have flax, you have linen. You will also potentially have silk the uh, silkworm was domesticated in the kind of late Bronze Age in China. So you can certainly have silk as a material. Your weaving during the Bronze Age will still be fairly basic. So it'll be a kind of a plain weave, which is when you have just like a single line weaving this way and then weaving back the other way. Your looms will obviously be fairly basic kind of hand looms at this point. There won't be, you know, the extensive kind of like Jacardian looms and things like that that would create the fantastical cloths of the Renaissance period, for example. But you would have that kind of textile cloth. You would also have uh, twined cloth for your rougher material, especially made from things like nettles and so on, that you would have very kind of rough cloth. So for an example of what a twined cloth would look like, if you've ever seen a beach mat, a beach mat is kind of like how twined cloth would be made. It's just twisted together by hand. Both men and women would be wearing skirts at this point. The men's skirts would probably be shorter and more kilt-like, but pants were invented fairly later. Um, and, you know, it would only be loincloths for like, laborers who would wear like plain loincloths. What we do see coming out of this era is everybody wore cloaks and there was cloak jewelry started becoming a thing here. So like you would have a brooch tying your cloak together at your shoulder and the larger and more elaborate your brooch, the richer and more important you were. And indeed, among the Celts, the brooch might have been a sign of nobility. And it's something that you can use in your world in terms of showing rank. Like there can be a whole heraldry around how the brooch pin works. 
you know, if it has three knots, it indicates that you are of this rank. And if you have one knot, it indicates that you're of a lesser rank. Or maybe if it has like gold woven into it, you're a king. But if it's silver, you're only a lord and so on. So you can work out this whole elaborate language around the brooch pin that shows people's rank. And, and then that becomes a whole part of your language, which you can weave into how your characters talk and the idioms that they use to speak about important people. Like, His brooch fell off could mean that he's been exiled or his rank has been removed from him. People also wore tunics during this phase and they also wore belts with copper buckles. So that's another piece of jewelry that you can look into is what your buckles look like during this period as well as what your torques, your neck jewellery, look like during this period, because both of those appear to have been very common. Okay, so that's food and clothing, but where did these people live? Right, (laughs) let's talk about Bronze Age buildings. Now, one of the first things that you need to understand is that Bronze Age tools made woodworking much, much easier. And because you now had axes and knives and so on made of metal, you could cut planks much finer. So you had plank manufacturing, you had shingles being made, you could shape and dress wood much better. And that's why in Europe, during the Bronze Age, we see wooden houses becoming a thing, because it is much easier to construct them, especially in Europe, where lumber is a common and easy to obtain resource. But in Mesopotamia, where wood is a scarce resource, they developed a very different building technique and they started using mud bricks. Now, mud bricks are made out of mud and straw put in a square container, a a square wooden frame and then dried in the sun. Then the container is removed and the brick is left to dry out completely in the sun. The bricks are then laid in walls, generally with either a mud mortar or with a bitumen mortar. And bitumen is asphalt. That's actually what it is. It's a, they used bitumen slime, they used asphalt slime as a mortar between their mud bricks. They did use some wood. It's clear that they made lintels from wood. They also used wood as the beams of the of the roofs. Their roofs in Mesopotamia were generally flat because they didn't need the peaked roofs because they didn't get that much rain. So the fact that you had like some rain that collected on top of the roof wasn't a problem because the weight wouldn't get enough to collapse the roof or or whatnot. And these people built amazing structures with these mud bricks of theirs. In the ancient city of Ur in Mesopotamia, which is in current day Iraq, they built the first true arch of sun-baked bricks in 4000 BC. An actual arch using bitumen slime and mud br- and sun-baked bricks. It's amazing. They also built corbel vaults and domes using these same bricks. Now, corbel vaults are when you've got two walls and each row of bricks it juts out a little bit over the previous one until your walls meet overhead like this and you've got this kind of stepped arch formed between the two walls. And that probably led them to build the most famous structure that they are known for, the magnificent ziggurats that they built, which was probably some form of a temple. So they used masses of bricks to build these structures, such as the temple at Tepe Gaura, the temple at Tepe Gaura, such as the, tem- the temple at Tepe Gaura, and the ziggurats of Ur and Borsippa. And these ziggurats were up to 26 meters or 87 feet high, which is just 
incredible. But, of course, this was in places where stone was a scarce resource. But in Egypt, stone was a common resource. Egypt had limestone, they had sandstone, they had granite. And they developed stone cutting and stone building techniques. Now, quarrying stone was a state monopoly, and stone was the substance used by the elite to build important state buildings and, of course, famously, the tombs of the pharaohs. So, how the pyramids are built, and please, they were not built by aliens, they were not built by magic. <laughs> They were built by the magic of sweat and blood in humans. So basically, they would quarry the stones and then they would transport them to the building site, probably using the Nile and flat bottomed barges. And then they would load the stones onto sleds, which would then be pulled to the building site from the river. At the building site, the final kind of finishing off of the stone would happen. So with, with mallets and so on, they'd smooth out the stone and finish the stone up. And then the stone would be pulled up to the correct height on the pyramid using mud ramps. And when they were finished building, the mud would be removed from the pyramid, leaving just the stone blocks. It was a massive endeavor. And it was centrally controlled by the state, which is how they built all of these huge structures. But they were definitely built by people using people power. And if you enjoyed that discussion of food, shelter, and clothing, hit the thumbs up button. And let's talk about Bronze Age technology. One of the most important inventions out of the Bronze Age is writing. Prehistory is called prehistory because we have no first-hand accounts of it. We have no writing of it. We can find devices, we can find artifacts, but we don't know how these things were used because it was never written down. But with the Bronze Age, society became so complex that writing had to be invented. Writing started in Mesopotamia, as cuneiform writing, where reeds were pressed into clay to form cuneiform letters. It probably started as a means to keep track of how many heads of cattle you are, how much tax you've paid, and to give receipt for payment received. At least those are the earliest forms of writing that we've found and been able to decipher. I did do a video on writing in fantasy worlds, which you can check out in the information card over there. During the Bronze Age, at 3000 BC, we have the first evidence of papyrus coming out of Egypt. So, of course, paper and papyrus and vellum and all of those kinds of things would be necessary for you to move from writing on clay tablets to writing on a more easily transportable substance. We also, from 3000 BC, have our first receipt. So, I have paid you and here is your receipt of payment, which I think is just fantastic. It is so human that the first things we invented writing for was to keep track of our stuff. And, of course, taxes. One of the other things that you should be aware of during the Bronze Age is that there is a definite focus on cleanliness. In 3200 BC, they already had latrines, they had toilets, so they had a concept of having a sewer system. They don't yet have flushing toilets or anything like that, but they do have public sewer systems, they do have clean water, they are definitely focusing on that kind of waste management. You also, during the Bronze Age, have public bathhouses becoming a thing, and that is a very important cultural activity that you can build into your societies. People can go to the bathhouse to entertain other people. They can go to the bathhouse to have private conversations. They can go to the bathhouse for relaxation. And this becomes something that is central to both your characters and the culture that you are building. 
So don't forget about things like baths and public sewers and all of those kinds of things that become an important bulwark of your culture. Speaking of entertainment, during the Bronze Age, you also have the invention of dice. You have puppetry being invented in the Indus Valley in 2500 BC. So you can have puppet plays becoming a thing in your Bronze Age culture. In 2000 BC, we have the first musical notation or the earliest musical notations that we have found coming out of Sumer. So you can have musical notations, you can have music masters, you can have composers of music who are writing music down and having it performed as part of your entertainment of your culture. And a culture that has entertainment is so much deeper and richer than a culture where you just skim on the entertainment. So think about things like board games, which you can certainly have, things like Nineman Morris, dice and puppetry, musical entertainment, all of those things are things that you can incorporate into your Bronze Age period. We also have a whole lot of trade and craft inventions during the Bronze Age. The first measuring rod or ruler type device that we found, the oldest one, is from 2650 BC in Nippur. We also found balance and weight scales in 2600 BC. Or we found a proctor that dates from 2200 BC. It's a a zanku shell with notches marked into it that they think was used to measure angles with. And that to me is just, it's amazing. These people were measuring angles during the Bronze Age period. In 2000, we have a scissors that dates back to 2000 BC in Mesopotamia. So like a cutting scissors you can have. We have a lathe from 1300 BC. So that starts shading more into your kind of classical period or your antiquities period. But you can potentially have a lathe in your Bronze Age for your more finely worked um, detail. Then, of course, the Bronze Age is when you start seeing war, and I will talk more about war and society and and all of the cultural elements thereof. But the biggest invention that you have during the Bronze Age for war was the chariot. Yes, Bronze Age weapons were, of course, superior to stone weapons because they didn't break and they could be sharpened and so on. But the chariot made a huge difference because now you had a mobile force. Commanders could move around the battlefield. You have cavalry. Even if they're not sitting on a horse, the chariots are the cavalry of the Bronze Age and they are a powerful, powerful unit. So if you're building a Bronze Age society, do not forget the chariots. Agriculturally, your inventions during this period, you have, of course, the reservoirs being built. You have canals, you have irrigation that started in the late Stone Age and carries over into the Bronze Age. We also have a seed drill that we dated back to 1500 BC, which is a seed drill is a thing where it makes a hole and drops a seed into that hole. So it's a better way of sowing seed rather than just sowing by hand. You're now making a hole and dropping the seed in it. The first water clock that we have evidence for is 2000 BC in Babylon. And a water clock is a pretty precise way of measuring time. By the way, the reason why we measure time in 60 minutes and in essentially basis 12 in, in 60 is because we got our time measurements from that Mesopotamian era and their basis for counting was 12. They counted in 12s. So that's why we have like 60 minutes and all of the kind of basic 12 um, calculations. So there's your side fact of time for the day. The first sundial that we have evidence for was 1500 BC in Egypt. And of course, glass is a byproduct of smelting metals. So you definitely have glass as a technology during the Bronze Age. 
And those are all the technological elements that you should be aware of when you're building your Bronze Age culture. You don't have to have all of them. You can have others. But these ones were there during our Bronze Age. And you can use them to build rich and engaging Bronze Age cultures in your world. As you can see from that list, the Bronze Age was a time of innovation. A lot of things changed during the Bronze Age. And I will stick to my guns on this one. I hold that that is because transportation and communication improved during the Bronze Age, both because of the invention of writing and because of things like the wheel and trade networks and sailing. Oh, that's the other thing, of course. Sailing ships were invented during the Bronze Age. So you definitely have sailing being a thing. So because of this improvement in communication between various settlements, I think that this is why you had so many technological innovations. Ideas breed ideas. They don't live well in a vacuum. If you enjoyed this video on Bronze Age technology and the basics of the Bronze Age, hit the thumbs up button and make sure you subscribed and hit the bell button because the next part of the series will be out in a week or so where we look at Bronze Age societies and economics. If you want to help me make more of these videos, hit the join button and get these cool perks and maybe check out my video on sailing on a fantasy sea. And I will see you soon for another episode of Just in Time World.